It is true um, that I was holding a rag on Shut Your Mouth to prevent my hand from bleeding. This, I, I, you know, I clench when I'm screaming. I probably still do that on stage. And for a long period of my life, I had very long nails, um, including that Shut Your Mouth era. They were far more fabulous than they are now. And uh, having long nails and clenching that hard will dig holes in your hands. So, but you still don't have the stigmata rag. You can really see. Oh, man. <laughs> do some kind of promo giveaway just, or something. Just, I think. just valuable. get that DNA <clears throat> out there. Well, and Shut Your Mouth and Open Your Eyes. Actually, when we were making the album, Hunter wasn't playing with us yet. And um, we knew Hunter from touring together with The Force. We were initially good friends with Matt Wedgley, the singer of his band, The Force. And um, Matt would put on shows for AFI in Grass Valley and Nevada City, where Hunter is from. That's where I'm from. And um, we would play together. And when we were making Shut Your Mouth and Open Your Eyes and we knew we needed a bass player. We knew we knew a great bass player, and we asked Hunter if he would play bass on the record, and that's where it began. And I said yes. And originally, you came in just as a session guy, just to do it um, for a while. We were because because Hunter was in the force, we didn't view him as a, a permanent um, replacement for our bass player. In fact, Frank from Snapcase was our bass player. Yeah. So we were trying to work out. We had never had somebody come in just to just to play bass. So we were talking with Hunter, like, how much do we pay you? And he said, you wanted six hundred and sixty-six dollars. I think you maybe you offered five hundred, and okay. I said, I'll take six hundred and sixty-six dollars. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Big, big time Satanist. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true about Frank, which yeah. a lot of people don't know. Snapcase was breaking up, and Hunter just played on the record, and it. He was just playing on the record, and we needed a permanent bass player. And we were out on the East Coast playing with Snapcase or staying with Snapcase, and it was clear that they were gonna they were gonna rap. And we asked Frank to be in the band, and he was into it. He said he wanted to, and he even flew to Berkeley, where we're from, to take promo glossies. Oh yeah, there are there. Are, I don't know where they are, or who Ooh, took them, to but see. there is a, there are promo photos somewhere of AFI with. Me and Adam and Mark and Frank, and um, and then Hunter toured with us, and we couldn't we couldn't not have Hunter. <laughs> yeah, it just it, once we and, started playing the songs and, and playing shows, it just there's like, made sense that, that <clears throat> Hunter needed to be in the band. So uh, we wanted to ask Hunter, which of course necessitated me calling Frank, which was which was really difficult. However. Frank was completely understanding, and Snapcase was staying together. So it all worked out. So that worked out. Frank, you out. <laughs> He's like, fuck you, band. Hunt is in. <laughs> Nick 13 actually came up with that, that melody line that he sings on a single second, which is the hook of that song. The way that record was written, Adam and Mark recorded a bunch of songs on a cassette and I would sit in this this room I lived in in this boarding house that we lived in sort of it was like a squat Matt Freeman called it the squat in this frat house we lived in a frat house that lost its charter and I was writing the songs while listening to this cassette and at the time I think Nick might have lived in my room um which was the size of this couch and different people would live in that room with me at the time Jay lived there for a while um, Skinhead Rob lived there. Various, various people <laughs> lived there. Um, uh, it's not even room for one human being to live. Anyways, we were there, and um, he asked about the songs, and I showed him something that I had written, and he suggested that um, that that melody, that counter vocal that happens in a single second, which really makes a song, and then um, invited him to come sing another record. 